Okay, so this is an introduction to signals and systems part two. And this again is this is part two of this lecture. Let's take a look to see what topics we'll be covering in this lecture. In this lecture, what we'll be doing is we'll take a look at the different properties related to uh, signals and systems. In particular, we'll be looking at linearity, time shift, time invariance, causality, stability, and then we'll talk a little bit about linear time invariant systems. Okay, so let's start first with linearity. A linear system satisfies the superposition condition. Okay, so what does that mean? If that's the case then, that means that system has both additive properties and homogeneity properties. Okay, and any system that has both of those then we can say the following about them. Let's say we have an input x of t and we have output y of t. If I was to scale that input x of t by some constant c and send it through some linear uh, system, then what we expect is that the output would be similarly scaled by that same constant, okay, as shown here. Also, if a system has linear properties, then we can say if we have some input x1 of t, and some input x2 of t, if x1 of t is, is scaled by some constant c1, and x2 of t is scaled by some constant c2, and they're added together, then their outputs y1 of t and y2 of t, y1 of t would be scaled by the same constant c1 as its input x of 1, and y2 of t would be scaled by the same constant c2, similar to its input c2. Uh, y x of 2 pardon me okay and those two terms there would be added together just as the two terms for the inputs were added together okay so again if we have a system that is linear then we can say both of these or we can say that both of these are true for that system all right so let's take a look at an example so given the following information, let's say you've been given the following information for a problem. You have that the input x1 of t into some system produces an output y of y1 of t, which is equal to e raised to the negative 2t, and an input x2 of t into that same system will produce an output y2 of t, uh, which is equal to e raised to the negative 3t. Uh, then if that's the case then, passing that information into that system such that the two terms are scaled by two uh, unique constants. In this case, x1 of t is scaled by 4, x2 of t is scaled by 5, and if we add those two terms together and send it through some function, then we can expect that the output would have e raised to negative 2t, and that would be scaled by 4, e raised to negative 3t and that will be scaled by 5 and those two terms there will be added and that's what we can expect from the output if the system is linear okay so again if this is the case the system is linear now why are we so interested in linear systems well the reason that we're interested in linear systems is because linear systems are predictable okay now even though most components and systems in electronics are not linear many of them have a region in which they have some linear properties and it's in that region where there's some linear properties in which we are most interested in and the reason we're interested in that area is because that area we can predict what the output would be based off of a specific input okay all right so now let's take a look at linear time shift or pardon me, a time shift, okay? And best way to probably look at this is to take an example to begin with. So let's say we have some signal and that signal we'll call xi n, which is equal to one. It has a value of one when n is equal to zero, okay? So again, it's xi of n and it's equal to 1 when we have a value of 0 for n. Everywhere else, however, it is equal to 0. Okay, so that's the uh, input that you've been given. That. So a way, another way to look at this is if we set this up as a vector here, 
Okay, so that xi of n is equal to 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, so on and so forth, where 1 is at position n equals 0. Okay, so that's another way to look at it. If we were to have a time shift, in this case, the time shift here, remember n represents time for discrete uh, systems and signals, okay? If we were to have a time shift of minus 1, okay, of minus 1. So what that means then is that we're moving everything that is at uh, position n, or in time n, whatever n is, we're moving that by 1, okay? We don't know whether it's moving forward or backwards at this case, okay? So x of i, that means initial, by the way. X of F means final. So this is being moved from here and it's going to this position uh, for the uh, same input, okay? If that's the case then, what happens then is initially what was at location XI uh, negative one, so whatever value is at that location now becomes the value at XF zero, okay? And what was there initially at negative one was actually a zero, right? Because this is a negative one position, so that becomes a zero. If we now change now to position what would be n1, or what uh, was n1, that n1 at minus one now, so that's one minus one, means then that xi of zero now, whatever was there would be shifted to now position uh, one within our new um, input signal, if you will, okay? And so, so uh, similarly, at what used to be at 2 minus 1, that position there, which was originally 1, that would be shifted to position number 2. And so that gives us uh, 0 there. So as you can see, there's a shift here. Okay, The 1 that used to be at position 0, which was indicated here, has now been moved to position 1. Okay, So in this case, then, this location here is now at n equals 0, and this now is at n equal 1. Okay, so this is sort of a uh, vector representation of what we just said. All right, so that in that case, that what we just did by putting a minus 1 shift there, that's actually a time delay. Okay, that's a time delay. And if we were to change that to plus one, then what we would have is a time advance, okay? So that's how time shift uh, works. Okay, now that we understand time shift, let's understand what we mean by time invariance. A system is time invariant if a time shift in the input results in the same time shift in the output, okay? So by saying that, what we're saying is that if we have a time shift in the input here, signal, okay, then that time shift in the input signal then, once you pass it through the function, then would end up giving us a time shift in the output equal to what we had in the input, okay? So this is the mathematical representation of this, and this is the graphical representation of the same thing that we're talking about, time invariance, okay? And again, this is another very important uh, concept. All right, let's look at causality. A system is said to be causal if the output of this system depends only on the past inputs and present inputs. It cannot depend on future inputs, okay? So let's take, for example, if we have a system uh, where y of n, okay, which is the output, is equal to this signal here, which has been shifted, minus this signal, input signal here, which has not been shifted, okay, this system would actually be causal. And let me explain why that is. So if we were to replace the values for n with 0, okay, what you'll notice is that the output at time 0 will be t depend on something that came from the past for the input, as well as something that came from the present for that same input. And by present, we mean that this time here is equal to this time, and this time here was before this time, okay? So we can say that, again, what was uh, uh, the output here, the present output depends on something that happened in the past, 
uh, input part that came from the past and it also depended on the present okay so this is this information here represents a causal system if this is the mathematics form all right if for example we have a situation in which uh, we have y of n is equal to x n plus 1 minus x n this system here is non-causal and the reason it's non-causal is because if we're looking at the present input okay or pardon me the present output that present output depends on something that hasn't occurred yet in the signal it's a future value okay and it also depends on the current input value okay so for that reason a system with this mathematics uh, this equation for for its uh, mathematical representation is non-causal all right okay let's talk about stability now a system is said to be stable and I put BIBO there we'll, we'll explain that in a minute the system is said to be stable if for a given bounded input BI a bounded output is generated for all times that means for all times ever forever and ever until infinity okay and for negative all the way to negative infinity the input uh, pardon me the output has always been bounded as long as the input has been bounded all right and that's how we define stability so let's take a look if we were to have a signal that looks like this okay you can see that this signal begins small and then it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger until it passed this bound here and it continues to get bigger and bigger forever this type of a signal here would then be an unstable uh, signal because it eventually becomes larger and we cannot predict uh, the values it just continues to go outside of uh, all bounds okay this signal here as long as it remains within these uh, ranges here okay and it doesn't expand out uncontrollably this uh, signal here then would end up being a bounded output signal or it's a bounded uh, signal okay so that's what we mean by stability if we put in a bounded input signal and we get a bounded output signal then we can say that that, st that system is stable all right so now that we're we've talked about all those properties let's now talk about uh, let's go ahead and talk about what a linear time invariant system is now as you may guess a linear time invariant system has both um, linear and time invariant properties okay these systems are highly desired and the reason that they're highly desired is this again when you have a linear system the outputs are very predictable and when it's time invariant it's also predictable within uh, the time time aspects okay so because it, the system is very predictable we know in terms of time and we know in terms of the linearity what we can expect that's why these systems are very 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 uh, desired now in order to obtain a linear time invariant system okay components in those systems must operate within their linear region remember earlier we said that many components what happened is they have a linear region and then they have this region where it, it isn't very linear at all okay but the thing is if we operate those components within that their linear regions then the systems that they're in should also be uh, linear systems and if we can operate them within those areas then we have a uh, base to model those systems and we can predict those systems and so forth okay so that is um, what linear time invariant systems are and that's why they're so important okay so again this was a introduction to signals and systems part two um, there should be a part three coming up to this uh, please do check um, YouTube in order to find that um, follow-up